Now we're happy, as always, to be joined by Tom Fitton, president of Judicial Watch, to give us an update on uh, really – I, I got to say, uh, uh, Congressman Doug Collins of Georgia is doing a fantastic service to the American people by releasing these transcripts. Uh, Tom Fitton, I know this is something you've been calling for forever. Uh, it, is there has there been any response from DOJ? Are they saying you can't do this? There's national security problems because because I don't see any you know any any state secrets hidden in these transcripts. No, they don't want to highlight their corruption uh, in keeping these materials secret uh, as out of deference to the Justice Department. They had sent these transcripts over to them, even though it was clear much of them had no classified information, and it's been radio silence, so that's why Congressman Collins, who is not known for being a terribly aggressive congressman, is releasing them on his own. And um, and we've got Lisa Page's testimony a couple of days ago, and uh, and now Peter Strzok's. Let's circle back onto Lisa Page for a moment because a whole lot has been revealed. We spoke with Chuck Ross about it yesterday, but but there's even more coming out now as people really come through it. We do finally have an answer from Lisa Page on what she believed Peter Strzok meant when they talked about an insurance policy, right? She confirmed this under oath. Yeah, she confirmed it was the the Russian investigation. Uh, Look, what comes out from both these testimonies is that the the text messages that people have been upset about mean what they say. Uh, You don't have to kind of talk your way past it or or, or interpret them in a way in a light most favorable to the writers. They didn't like President Trump. They had an insurance policy in case he won, which was the Russia investigation. Uh, And they thought it was their duty to pursue this investigation, as I say, because they didn't like Trump. now, they would tell you, well, just because they may not like the person they're investigating, it doesn't mean that they handled the investigation improperly. <laughs> you know, I don't think that would be uh, persuasive to a jury, uh, nor do I think it's persuasive to any other sensible person. And, and especially, it, it helps explain why, Larry, this investigation was allowed to continue and, frankly, fester given the paucity of information that there was any collusion. How do you explain the abuse of FISA? How do you explain that they were targeting a presidential candidate and the president so casually? How do you explain it? It means it's because they hated them. He, ha- they hated him, and they were letting. They were just, uh, as a result, uh, breaking all the rules to target him. And, and by the way, we are now learning also, uh, Tom Fitton, that when Robert Mueller found it, let's not forget Peter Strzok and Lisa Page were on his team. The yeah. special counsel's team, when he discovered or when it was when he learned, I should say, he didn't discover it. But when he learned of these text messages, he did dismiss them. They got reassigned back to the FBI. But he then didn't investigate this. He didn't actually under his umbrella investigate what was going on with this obvious operation within the FBI and the Justice Department to investigate the president and to try to uh, stop the president. Uh, wouldn't that be something you would think that the special counsel might want to investigate and look into? Yeah, I mean, if I were Mr. Mueller, I'd be very concerned that uh, the whole genesis of his investigation was tainted. Right. And but, un- you know, unless, you know, unless Robert Mueller just believes that his whole job is to get Trump, if he can, well, not to actually exactly investigate right. you know, wrongdoing. And, and you know what? That's what he is going to believe. That's what he was hired to do, Okay. This is why you need adults in the Justice Department to say, yeah, we've got these FBI agents who hated President Trump. Uh, they were behind both the Clinton investigation and the Trump investigation at the same time. Uh, we still have uh, questions about how this Trump investigation started. We're going to freeze everything until we figure out what went on here and whether everything was done on the up and up. Yeah. And, but, you know, Justice Department is just like some sort of freight train, and, and it's, it refuses to be derailed. Uh, despite all this evidence of corruption. And on top of that, you had this Peyton Place type of uh, atmosphere there (laughs) with this illicit relationship, adulterous relationship between Page and Strzok. And, of course, you know, anything Page wanted to do or Strzok wanted to do, uh, you know, you can't can't separate that from their uh, personal relationship uh, because it infected it. Because, you know, your girlfriend's saying, I want to do X, the boyfriend's saying, I want to do Y, and you don't have the normal checks and balances in place. And so the whole thing has been corrupted not only because of the animus against President Trump, but because of the adulterous relationship. 
My, uh, speaking, what, uh, what an unholy mess this it, is. Yeah, the whole and thing's it, collapsing. In it my is view. An, an complete. You know, the question is, how many people will it take out with it in terms of innocence, like President Trump? Uh, it's a complete and total embarrassment, too, for, for our, our uh, federal government and for our Justice Department. Why there aren't more voices within our government speaking out about this and trying to get to the bottom of it is, is maddening. Tom Fitton is one of those people trying to get to the bottom of it on behalf of Judicial Watch, who does such great work. And I know uh, part of the great work that you've done over the last several years is uh, uh, you were part of the uncovering of the, the Clinton email scandal, the Clinton email server scandal. So I'm sure you were interested in this uh, little tidbit. Uh, Peter Strzok's testimony that's been released now, uh, much of it focused on his role and his conduct in investigating whether Hillary Clinton broke the law or not. Uh, the the Justice Department never got a warrant to actually take possession of this email server. They instead just negotiated to get the server, and the results of this negotiation was they weren't allowed to look at a whole trove of emails. Is that is that correct? Yeah, I and mean, that sounds about right, and it comports with the uh, materials that have been publicly released as well. And uh, compare and contrast the way that uh, the careful kid gloves treatment that President uh, Mrs. Clinton had uh, with the targeting of President Trump and then candidate Trump. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's just it, it demonstrates uh, it can't that you can't explain the disparate treatment, but for political bias in politics. I, I mean, and, and you know, the idea that you know you walk off the State Department grounds with sixty thousand emails, you destroy half of them, and no one bothers to get a warrant. Yeah, even though they know classified information was present. And then they they say, we'll go ahead and let you have it, but you can't look at any of the foundation emails. But, of course, part of the problem here, part of the scandal was that she was leveraging her role as Secretary of State to aid the foundation. And the only way to know that is to look at the emails and compare what was going on on the server. It's madness. Perfect sense if it's a fake investigation. Yep. Right, they, did, they were never going to prosecute her. It's pretty clear based on Paige's testimony that no one in DOJ wanted to prosecute her. So why bother with the warrants? Why bother with aggressive questioning? Why bother with prosecuting people for perjury? DOJ wasn't going to do anything, so it was a pretend investigation. So all the normal things you might have had done for a regular investigation weren't done. Yeah. Well, thank God we've got people like Tom Fitton, Judicial Watch, and some journalists and some yeah. congressmen. Well, you know, we're questioning people in the email matter. Just today, we our attorneys were questioning the person who set it up up in New York. Oh, I can't uh, wait to hear about that. So, so it's not over, which is... Uh, but, of course, it's Judicial Watch doing the work and not Congress or Justice Department. Thank you, Tom. Always good to talk to you. Keep up the great work.